Web Gojo isn't dead yet. It's one of the most popular Jujutsu Kaisen theories out there right now, and there's definitely some validity to it. Gojo was thought to be both untouchable and unbeatable in Jujutsu Kaisen, but this was proven wrong by Sakuna. A few months ago, Gojo was sliced in half and killed by Sakuna's dismantle, with help of Maharaga. In the meanwhile, Gojo fans have been hiding in the shadows after all of the slander they are throwing at Sakuna. There might be time for them to come back out into the light, since soon, Gojo may be miraculously revived, and this is where the copium comes in. You see, there's a massive narrative point that Gojo is somewhat invincible, as shown in this fight against Toji many years ago. Toji nearly killed Gojo by stabbing him, but he didn't finish him off properly. Gojo claimed that Toji should have gone for the head because of his ridiculous healing properties with his reverse curse technique. So the theory since summer of 2023 has been that as long as he isn't decapitated, Gojo can find a way to live. Both Sakuna and Toji are both parallels in the sense they're full of themselves and constantly underestimate their enemies. Once Toji believed Gojo was dead, he left him there and ended up surviving, so Sakuna could fail in the same way. This has recently been reinforced by chapter 248 in which Sakuna has realised that Gojo's sliced body is now missing and this raises some insane suspicion as to who took his body and why. Sakuna's theory is that Uiui has teleported Gojo and the other wounded sorcerers to Shako instantly. As Jujutsu High's primary doctor, she has the ability to use the reverse curse technique to regenerate any lost limbs and heal wounds. But unlike Sakuna or Gojo, she can heal other people. Although it may take a while and is 50% less efficient than healing herself, it's possible she can save Gojo. And if he does, he'd probably just be out of commission for a while. Gojo grew an arm back and already healed his neck, so there's a chance they could just reconnect his lower body back together. There's always been this interesting narrative surrounding both Gojo and Shako, and it has to do with their friendship, even friendship in general. Gojo has always been of the opinion you die alone, and chooses to pursue power as a lone wolf. But Shako never understood that, and suggested that he was never alone. Fundamentally, Gojo was so powerful he never needed to rely on others, whereas it's Shako's job as a doctor to rather support others, so it's literally just the opposite. Maybe her healing Gojo will finally help him understand the necessity of having teammates and support. I seriously believe that could be an important theme to the story, especially surrounding Gojo, and that's because according to Gege, he's based off Kakashi from Naruto. Kakashi is obviously very similar to Gojo appearance-wise, having white hair, a special eye, and a covered face. They also both utilize special spatial abilities which make them extremely strong compared to their respective series, but intriguingly their personalities are kind of similar as they're both very smart, cool and laid back. It's just that, unlike Gojo, Kakashi isn't arrogant and that's mainly because he's gone through more development. A long time ago Kakashi's potential made him very arrogant, exactly like Gojo, and he used to look down on people like Obito and Mike Guy, thinking he could do everything alone. He never really understood why his father abandoned his mission to save his friends, but when Obito died and he failed to save Rin, he was left without a team who he never appreciated. That's when he was humbled and adopted Obito's philosophy that those who abandon their missions are scum, but those who abandon their friends are even worse than scum. Ultimately, Gojo has now been humbled in the same way and now appreciates the idea of having friends around in death. Remember, Kakashi during the pain arc died against pain, but had one more experience in purgatory and talked with his dad to reflect on actions he had gone through and then being revived. So I wouldn't be surprised if this proved to be the inspiration for Gojo's revival in the Jujutsu Kaisen story if I were you. Also keep in mind, if Gojo comes back, I think he probably would have lost some of his abilities like Akashi did at the end of Naruto Shippuden. Remember, a lot of people think that Gojo could have made a binding vow in order to save himself by sacrificing some of his power. While that would be cool, I don't know how much evidence there is substantiating that. Gojo before this moment thought that what was truly important to him was his own power and desires. That's why Geto posed the infamous question to Gojo, who at the time couldn't even comprehend what it really meant. He asked him, are you the strongest because you're Gojo, or are you Gojo because you're the strongest? What this question fundamentally questions is if his identity is purely shaped by the fact that he's strong. That's why Gege constantly makes nasty comments about Gojo saying that he doesn't really have a personality. At first I thought it was a joke, but maybe it wasn't. Gojo is basically like one of those gym bros who spend all of their time either going to the gym or talking about it. Maybe both. While there isn't anything inherently wrong about that, it's more of an addiction that clouds Gojo's mind from appreciating everybody else around him. Geto was always trying to tell him that Jujutsu exists to protect the weak, and while that may be the reason Gojo turned to education in the first place, he never exactly understood why. That's why in Purgatory, Geto told Gojo that he never really cared about keeping sorcery alive or protecting people. When Nanami butts in and Gojo asks him what he thought about his own death, he said that maybe he told him, if you want to become somebody new, go to the north. If you want to return to who you used to be, go to the south. Not only do I think this question is posed to Gojo, but I think that it needs to be answered if he wants to decide if he wants to change or not. It said that immediately after the Buddha's birth, he stood up and took seven steps to the north and uttered, I am the chief of this world, the eldest in the world. There will be no rebecoming implying that he had come to the end of his reincarnation cycle and he knew it. Every step the Buddha took, a lotus flower bloomed. 
Just like the Buddha, Gojo claimed to be the Honoured One and is associated with lotus flowers. So in a lot of ways, the Buddha and Gojo share a lot of commonalities. Did you know that Gojo's name, Sataru, means enlightened? So it's possible that Gojo is yet to find enlightenment, which requires him to let go of his selfish desires and become free. I believe it was never Gojo's destiny to necessarily stop Sukuna, but rather his role as a teacher to train up the next generation, which will help him find his true enlightenment, as the Buddha tried to help others to become enlightened so they could reach Nirvana, as he did. So I think Yuji will be the one to stop Sukuna instead of him. Gojo started the story as pretty much the protagonist, but I think the next step for him is to become a side character, whereas it's the other way around for Yuji. Yuji will go from basically side character to protagonist. Yuji in Oli Month has now learned how to use the reverse curse technique to strengthen his physical abilities. Of course Sakuna is still hating my boy Yuji, but is somewhat disturbed by his incredible willpower. He believes that Yuji is now strong enough to match him blow for blow, and this is when he comes to the realization that he's not truly satisfied. This makes Sakuna question why he's even fighting in the first place, because originally he thought he was just fighting for the sake of it, just because he could, he thought he was a natural disaster, a calamity. But now he thinks about it, he is changing and he doesn't like the fact that he's relying on others to satisfy him. So maybe this is for Shadowing for his rematch with Gojo. If he is revived from the dead, he may be able to fulfill the excitement that Sakuna gets from fighting the strongest sorcerers in the world. It would also allow Gojo the opportunity to fight Sakuna alongside all of his friends with a different outlook on life. As strong as Sakuna is, he's slowly being worn down, he's lost his domain expansion and intense shadows technique because of Gojo, was then forced to use his one time revival against Kashimo and has now just lost his curse tool, Kamuto, because of Higamura's efforts. So all of these things haven't been useless and have instead proven to be necessary gamble to chip away at Sukuna's arsenal. Well I do believe that Yuji will be the one who ultimately defeats Sukuna, because Yuji is the only one in the series who can teach Sukuna about love. It's plausible that Gojo could somehow be involved in helping Yuji too, to make it obvious that it's Sukuna's selfishness versus the entire world working together against him. Mahita points out that the humans have this hypocrisy, as they think they're superior to everything else, just because of their intelligence and morality. He argues that every being, including plants, has a soul, so they're all equal. Curses and humans are basically natural, like water and earth. There's no difference between them, really. The moral high ground was built by humans to make them feel better than everything else, and Sukuna doesn't really care about this concept, that's why he kills. However, for Yuji and his friends, they'd sacrifice everything, including themselves, to kill Sukuna and save the world. Sukuna understands that. He understands it's Yuji's ideal to save others, and it's basically just the opposite to his ideal, to kill. So fundamentally, they're on opposite sides of a spectrum. Yuji envisions his death while striving to save lives. This opposing ideology sets Yuji apart from Gojo and Kashimo, and that's why I think Sukuna hates Yuji the most, because he has this genuine ideological beef with him, and Sukuna finds that unsettling. Let's revisit Gojo's possible return. As we know already, Gojo's body has been taken to Shoko, who is an expert user of a reverse curse technique. According to Gege, there's only three sorcerers capable of healing others this way, and she's one of them. About Shoko's statement from chapter 220, that Gojo was an idiot for thinking he was alone. She was always there to help him, just like the others, so it'd be kind of ironic if she was the one to save Gojo. Near the end of Gojo's fight with Sukuna, his own reverse curse technique was replenished. So even if Shoko isn't capable of completely healing Gojo, it's possible that she'll heal him to the point that he's capable of doing it himself. Gojo was told that if he wants to become somebody new, he needs to go north, to be reborn as a Buddha once was pose the question to Nanami. He immediately wanted to go south because he hated the idea of change, betting on a future generation as he died. The reason Gojo even taunted Principal Yaga about sorcerer dying with regrets was because Nanami changed his mind right then. However, as I mentioned before, Gojo stands as a complete opposite of Nanami. When it really comes down to it, Gojo wants to move towards improvement, just like how the Buddha reached for enlightenment. All Gojo wanted was for his best friend Geto to acknowledge and praise him for fighting Sukuna. Now that he's truly happy and has realized that he isn't as lonely as he once thought he was, reaching his peak strength, he can now live for the sake of others instead of just himself, making him more human. He once said that nobody can really understand him because they just admire him, the same way people admire flowers. Another way Gojo could be saved involves Principal Yaga's curse technique, the Cursed Corpse, which requires a sorcerer to replicate soul information from physical information, and then input that into a Cursed Corpse core. Additionally, the creator must put these cores containing three compatible souls into one Cursed Corpse, and then have them constantly observe each other. Of course, it could also be possible that Gojo is actually just straight up dead and any attempt to revive him just won't work, which would put Sukuna at a massive advantage, especially considering that as of recently, a new rule has been added to the culling games, allowing Sukuna to now gain Tengen's Grand Merger ability, which grants him the ability to merge with humanity. This power passed on to Sukuna means that he's now not just dicking around and killing meaninglessly, since he possesses a massive threat to the entire planet. 
But now Yuta had returned and tanked a point blank dismantle from Sukuna, who denied his chance to switch sides. Yuta, like Yuji, lives to protect and value humanity, so he uses Rika to finally face off with Sukuna. With Yuta on the battlefield, we have no idea what's going to happen. I can only assume that Sukuna has another ace up his sleeve and will win, but I wouldn't count Yuta out just yet, since remember he's meant to only be second to Gojo. So comment down below what you think is going to happen next, and whether you think that Gojo will actually return. Anyway, thanks for watching, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to see more JJK content in the future, until then, see you next time.